All right. It's looking like it's trying to work over here on Facebook. Let me do this. There we go, guys. This will be fun. Did you see my new sign back there? Oh, it's epic. Just epic. Let's see here. Over there. Should be good. Now, <clears throat> you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? As we have a lot of fun on this little 16 by 20 inch canvas. Now, on Mondays and Friday nights, I like to show you how to do every single step from here throughout the entire thing. So, let's go into a little bit of our Indian yellow, which is a very orangey color, until you start putting it up here onto our canvas, right? Just drop out this weird little Indian yellow, just like almost like a, I don't know, a little pillar, some little weird little thing out there. Doesn't have to be the most perfectest thing you ever seen, just a weird little thing that's happening out in the night, right? Now we're going to take that same sort of thing, we're going to make it the same sort of shape down around the bottom, right? Now, anywhere that you're watching, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or over on TikTok, you should be able to be either hitting that like button or tapping that screen and sharing this out to all of your friends and family, right? Now, we're going to go in from that Indian yellow. We're going to take a little bit more out here just to, just to have it look a little weirder, right? <laughs> it's all about looking a little weird. And we don't need the same amount of color everywhere, and our bottom is going to get swiped so many times that it doesn't really matter. Only really worried about the top. Now, let's come and grab a little of our, you know what, let's get some sap green. A little of our sap green color, maybe put some of that sucker out here, but not a lot. It wants to be really bright, right? So we don't need it to be super bright out there. We just need to have a little bit of color everywhere, a little, a little touch every here, and a little bit everywhere in order for us to have a very cool little painting start to come forth, right? Now, we'll go into our phthalo green this time, which is that oceany sea type of green. Come around from this side. And again, I don't want to put so much on my brush that the whole canvas turns green. That's not the goal, right? Take some of this guy from down here, pop some of that guy in from around there, and all of a sudden, we've got a pretty similar, pretty neat little thing. Now, just for shoots and giggles, I'm going to come in here you know what, with a bit of our, right here, our uh, ultramarine from the Meaden set, or your Prussian blue, same thing, right through the center. Just so we'll have a little difference, right? A little bit of blue over here, a little bit of thing over there, and with that same bit of blue, we're going to go just like that, right? So I we'll have our little reflections, however they're going to end up. That's all we need. We just need to make sure we've got a little bit of color across the entire bit of canvas, even if it's one swipe, right? We know there's color on the brush, so even one swipe, it'll drag it across just enough. Now, what do you think about this really cool Paint With Josh sign? First ever neon sign. I know you might not be able to see the whole thing depending on where you're watching from, but it's freaking awesome, totally worth the way too high a price that I paid for it. Just totally worth it, though. As soon as I, oh, it was like, I was like a kid on Christmas when I opened that thing up today. I was like, oh my God, you guys, look at this thing. It was amazing, literally amazing. It changes through all these different colors and it's got the rainbow mode like it's on right now. So it'll just slowly filter through every color. Just like paint with Josh, right? Through all the colors of everywhere in the spectrum. <laughs> now, let's dry off our brush, set it all down and then have a little fan brush out, right? We're gonna come into our titanium white and our uh, yellow ochre, which will really brighten up our color into the most gorgeousest of things, right? We don't need a whole lot of paint on the brush, so a lot of times I wipe off the excess. Look at how much paint is on there, still how much is on our brush, right? We don't need all that extra bit. Why don't we come up in here and decide we have this crazy, like, pillar of cloud just sort of, sort of some sort of galactic thing, right? We don't need to have too much paint onto our brush. Maybe that guy. Ooh, look at it as it changes through that blue little swipe right there. What if we came down this way and our whole little guy up here, little squiggle, little squaggle, and came up around that side. Pretty close, pretty similar to what it looks like top and bottom. All you gotta do, right? Now we're gonna come in here with our one inch brush. And we're just going to start to soften things out. But let's stay in our yellow areas first because they're going to want to be the brightest. And if we go out into that green area, it's going to make our yellow much darker, right? So let's get our yellow. We'll whip it up there. This weird little galactic sort of cloud. Come down into our yellow section down in here. Blend this guy out too. 
Doesn't have to be exactly the same. Now that we're into our greens, right? We can come out, we can push this bit, push this guy out here just enough. And then inside, all we're doing is just trying to make a little bit of weird little thing, honestly. Doesn't have to be the most perfect thing you've ever seen. Just a weird little bit out there. Because that's it, right? It's not all about focusing on one piece of sky and doing it too much, right? It people tend to focus too much on their sky or one single point of it, right? Let's make this part really bright. And if we're gonna do that, let's make that part really bright, right? See how we rotated angles? This one was like this, so that one's like that. Just to have them be the same. A little bit of brightness, a little bit of brightness. Boom, boom, boom. Get these cool little things that are happening back and forth along our sky, right? Now, let's get a little bit more of our white paint and just kind of mix it down here into that yellow bit so there's not too much. And what if we had this whole thing kind of up and around? It's like, just this wicked sort of like, almost like a wave, right? It's gonna do that. It's gonna go around over here. Coming out, make that big old thing. We're gonna have a second one come out, like a whole other big old giant thing, right? Doesn't have to be perfect on the bottom. That's one thing you're gonna find out. And this stuff, especially around the sides, this is the only part we're gonna be looking at as far as reflection. And trust me, I'll show you by the time we get down there. Now with that very small amount of paint, I'm just gonna to wanna to blend it the smallest bit. I'm not gonna to wanna to push it so hard that it connects colors or even grows back and connects colors over here. That's not what you wanna do. By the way, guys, everybody say happy, uh, don't say happy. <laughs> everybody wish Mac well. May, uh, wish him better. Uh, he's, uh, he's not been feeling well lately, and it would just be nice if everybody would just say, get better soon, Mac. So that's all you gotta do. <laughs> Don't say happy sickness. That's not fun. Nobody likes that, right? But just like that, guys, little shh, shh. We get to decide what it looks like all up to us. Maybe we take this guy, we push him out a little bit more, just with the color that's on our brush, nothing extra. And all it is is kind of blending with the colors back in our sky a little bit further away, right? Yours doesn't have to look like this either. Trust me, never has to look exactly the same. I like to get out here and mess around and show you that with all these different colors, right, what if, just per se, right, what if there was a little line of jaggedness all through that blue and up into the teal green? Oh, that'd be fantastic. Pop a little bit out here too. Just watch when you go back to connect those guys what they start turning into, right? Because this one's gonna wanna grow and that guy's gonna wanna grow and all of a sudden it becomes part of the same cloud. Just as so long as we can push on it hard enough, right? We get to decide what it looks like. I don't know how many times I gotta say that. All the time, apparently, back into here. And let's try to crisscross off of this guy. He was coming out of here. And then he was back and up and down, all around the side. Little touch of brightness over there. And then we'll just blend them all together, pushing them back and away, right? Away from the thing. We've pulled away from our darkness up here. So we're gonna be pulling away from our darkness over here. Grabbing this guy up, mixing him, and just like that, you got a little reflection of what's happening above, happening below, right? Just a little craziness. Again, doesn't have to be just like that. Doesn't have to look like mine does, right? All we're gonna do with our bottom is take our big old two inch brush and just push on it real hard, right? Lots of pressure down along the whole smasheroo. And then we're gonna come side to side and take our sort of reflection and turn it into water. Now, depending on where your little swipes go or how far they come up could determine on how far your horizon is, how much water you have out there, right? All depends on us. We get to decide, my guys. We totally get to choose. And again, your skies don't have to look just like Paint with Josh's sky. I'm just showing you, with all these crazy colors that we have out here, you can make all sorts of stuff happen in your skies, right? You could, you could have chose pink and blue, or you know, blue and red, or whatever, green and yellow, like me. Whatever you want it to be, we get to decide what it is, right? Nobody else gets to come in and tell us it should or shouldn't look like that. Because we like to have fun with our colors over here, that's the best part about Paint With Josh, right? So remember, give me a thumbs up, make sure you're leaving comments, tap on the screen, and then I know if you're watching over on YouTube, you gotta just give me one thumbs up and that's it. Just click the thumbs up button, that's all you need to do. Especially if you like my freaking rad sign. You gotta give me a thumbs up if you like my rad sign, right? <laughs>
All right, now let's come in here, and I'm going to show you how to paint a galaxy full of stars in just about five seconds flat. I want somebody to time me, okay? Get out your timer on your phone. We're going to put a little of our pure liquid white out here on the edge. That's it. And then we're going to come back and blast in just about a million stars throughout our sky, right? Now, what if we zoomed in just a touch over on YouTube, just a little bit? We zoom in just a bit without going too crazy. There we go. There we go. Just a little bit closer, right? Now, somebody start the countdown. I'm going to do it in about five seconds. Fill this whole thing full of stars. We're not going to do the bottom just yet. We'll do the bottom at the end. Otherwise, they're going to get swiped over and get lost, right? So, count it down. Here we go. And boom, 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 boom. Look at all these little things flying out, right? The further away we get, the more sparse that they are, the closer in we are, the more compact and close those stars are right in the center of our galactic sky, right? All these little things out here building stars in our galaxy. We don't need to do it on the bottom, not just yet. So why don't we save that little teeny tiny fan brush? And we'll save him, put him over to the side, and then come back in and we're gonna decide where we wanna have some land, right? Now, you don't have to do this with a two inch brush. It only takes a little bit of time if you do, but you don't have to, okay? Let's come in with the two inch or the one inch, whatever you wanna do, and tap into my green and then we're gonna come down here into my cat yellow, tap into this guy a little bit. Now, the, the brighter green it is, the closer it's gonna look. So let's dull it back down a little bit turn our brush and maybe from over here we could start tapping in these little bits all the way back right how far do you want it to come down into your bit of water you tap it you come over and you tap it maybe you come over here tap it down tap it down tap it down how far each little thing each little typewriter tap right when we go back in we fill them all in little things out there in the night right or whatever the day, the night, whatever time you're painting. Mine's a nighttime painting, right? Around the edge, that's all you have to do. You could continue it all the way along the side and do grass on this side. Just by adding a little bit more paint to our brush, right? Kind of dabbing it in from the side, right up into the paint like that, right? That way we got this little ridge. And then what if we did on this side? We come down, connect him right there. Now all of a sudden we turn it from a river into a lake, all right? Get this little bit, start going side to side. All of a sudden, we can build this little grassy hill all the way around this lake if we wanted to, or this little pond, right? Kind of go back in, get a little bit more brighter in our grass, a little bit more bright yellow, and that will determine that it's much closer to us. The brighter it is, the closer it is, right? And that's just a little of our pure yellow gone over the green that we had. It doesn't need to be the same amount of brightness everywhere. Just with a couple little taps. We've all of a sudden made this enormous lake out there in the night, right? This crazy thing sort of reflecting our, our nighttime sky, all based on what we want it to look like. If we want this guy to be a bit brighter, we come in with a bit more of that yellowy paint. Not too much now. We don't want it to be exactly like it is in the front, right? These guys have to look different. They must. They're further away. Okay, now let's come back in. And maybe with our palette knife, we're going to mix up a few little colors, not too much of Paint With Josh plaque, even though we're going to need a little bit later. I'll ask you again later on. So what are the three colors that we're mixing up in order to make Paint With Josh plaque the deepest and darkest of all deep, dark colors known to existence? A color so deep and so dark that even Glitterwicks can't make a candle so dark. She probably could. She probably could, actually. But <laughs> by the way, go to Glitterwicks.com most fantasticest candles you're ever gonna see in the coolest little jars too. Look at these jars, looks like the Hulk like squeezed them and then twisted them just a little bit. They're friggin' rad. So go over to glitterwicks.com and find those. Now, once we've mixed up all of our Paint With Josh plaque, which you guys have already told me, those three colors are blue, black, and crimson, right? Like always. Let's get a little bit of that onto our knife, just a small little roll of it, little teeniest, tiniest bit. Maybe out here we start scraping it in. Out there, out there, real light, along the edge of our grass. Get this little bit of land out there, just by dropping in a bit of dark, right? A bit of darkness, all we need. We don't need it to get too big. If it gets too big, it's gonna look too close, right? Now on this side, a couple of these little guys are gonna hide what our, our little river thing looks like. Or if you do this, 
because this is just light enough, we could literally take it away, right? If we had a nice clean brush, we could blend this guy back into almost the, the sky, the clouds, everywhere else, right? Take away that whole bit of grass, just because. Pull down a little bit on our dark spot, a little bit, right? Back over here, and now this whole area will be water coming in from this faraway land, right? Get this faraway bit back in here. And then we can go cover over whatever we don't want to see. All right, get a little piece back in here. It's higher and higher and higher. There's a little bit of river coming in. Boom, boom, boom. Dropping our white underneath our, our Paint With Josh plaque. And a little bit of white right underneath that Paint With Josh plaque. And then we're going to light it up with our brush. And that way, it should streak it down a bit more. Tab off our two-inch brush. Just like that, come underneath this guy and drag down just a little touch of that white without grabbing any of the plaque. Oof, don't grab the plaque, seriously. All right, that little bit back there, right, very softly, swipe over. All of a sudden, you start getting little bits of water line back in here, and all these little things are going to disappear. All right, now, this is all going to be part of our tree anyway. It doesn't really make a difference whether or not you leave the grass back there or you wipe it away. You eventually cover it with a big old massive tree. So whether it's back there or not, we knew it was, and that's what makes it a lot of fun, right? Let's get a little of our liquid white over here with our titanium white, and drag along right underneath this guy, just underneath that bit of dark. Don't go up too high, okay? And come underneath it again with our very clean dry brush, and just very lightly shrink down just a little bit. You don't need it to go down too far. A little bit, swipe over, very lightly. This little bit of light across our water. Woo! Baby! That oh, looks cool. All right, now back in with our grass. I want to bring a little of our grass back down on top of that bit of darkness, right? Not all the way down, but enough. Just tap it down, just to make sure it's real small and far away, right? Now, that dark serves as the sunken water down below the level of our grass, right? I'm going to take our grass up a little bit higher. There we go. A little bit more of a hill, a little bit more of a pitch back there. There's a little pitch out on the pitch back there, right? Now, let's grab up a fan brush, get this guy, and let's start throwing in some trees. Maybe a couple off in the distance, maybe. Maybe, maybe one just right up in the front. You never know where we're going to go, right? Over here, I think I like that back there. Let's come over here. We need to get a lot more of our Paint With Josh plaque, you guys. No, we could do one little tree off to the side with this amount. Let's get one little guy. Moving right down on the edge. Hop in a little bit, all right? The more we go down, the more we push in, which extends our trunk a little bit, makes our branches a little fatter. And then we'll go back and highlight that guy in a little while when we go to do our highlights. We take our, that's not our grass brush. This is the grassy brush. We'll tap underneath this guy just a little bit, just to help him sit right down into the grass, right on the edge of the bank, out there looking over all this gorgeousness. All right, now, we need to mix up a lot more of our Paint With Josh plaques. So what are those three colors that we need in order to make a deep, really deep, dark color? And those three colors that are on the, the knife right here. And just about equal parts right back into that deepest, darkest pile of paint onto our palette. What are we going to mix up? Do you know the Muffin Man or the three colors? Either one I'll take. If you know the Muffin Man, cool. You're cooler than me. And if not... And I'm going to need those three colors that are going to tell us what Paint With Josh plaque is. Let's just see. And by the way, guys, this one is available for sale. If you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, you can nab it up before anyone else can get at it. I'm serious. The Muffin Man, of course. Do you know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man? Am I the only one that remembers that? Seriously? Is this is like Shazam? Okay, we're going to come over here. Get a little of our paint, wiggle it down through that deep, dark pile of Paint With Josh plaque, which you all told me was, again, blue, black, and crimson make up that Paint With Josh plaque color, right? Now, let's come up here, maybe above our light source, just a little. We'll go right down, boom, right down here onto our frontals. And all of a sudden, what makes this tree stand out as being closer than all of his other, his other friends, his other tree pals? What makes him being, uh, what makes this guy stand out? That's my question to all you painters, all you painters that are out there watching. What makes this tree 
stand out as being in front of all the other stuff back there, right? And again, we're just sort of hitting at the trunk, and then the more we go down, the more we're letting the brush contact the canvas, right? Popping out all these little bits. Boom, 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 boom. Turn our brush over. Launch them out. Just have some little dark things happening out there is all we need. We don't need to see every single branch, right? Branch, my man. <laughs> we don't need to see all that. Do a little bit more of our yellow. Work our little grassy guy back in, a little higher on one side. Come over here a little higher on that side. So it gets lower in the middle. See what I mean? Boom, 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 boom. Couple taps, right? And then let's get a little bit more of our grassy bit. And we'll light up the exterior where that light would come down. And maybe it wouldn't hit back here behind the tree. I mean, that little area kind of shadowy back there. Just a little shadowy area back here. You can even tap in some more of our paint and josh plaque just to really seal in the shadows. Right? <laughs> just like that, guys. Seriously, leave yourself a little dark space to, uh, to sign your painting when it comes down here, right? Now, we've got all this extra paint with josh plaque. Let's grab that big, massive brush that makes the bushies, right? The Bob Ross brush that's the humongous one. Dude, look at the difference in the color of the bristles from the outside to the inside. Woo! All right, let's get this monster, and then I don't want to cover this up, right? Because that's where everyone's going to be looking. Literally directly below, they're going to want to see the bright spot. So we're going to get very close to that old bright area right there without getting too close and covering it all up, right? We're also going to go into the, the sap green right on the same brush. Now, this brush is big enough where you can get a bit of each on each side and come up here and start launching down the plaque, then rotate the brush over, launch off the green. So now we got green on the outside, plaque on the bottom, and then when we hit it with our, our gorgeous bit of, of highlight color, that's when it's really gonna stand out. A little bit more of our Paint with Josh plaque. Rotate that brush over, come back up with the, with the greenery. Because you can't just have it all be plaque, you gotta have some greenery in there, right? Come over with a little bit more of our grassiness. We could extend our little thing out just like that. Over here, over there, tapping in all that plaque makes it very dark and shadowy back here. All right, so you can come in with some white, some more of our yellow just to brighten it up. Back in with lighter taps, little chip tappies and chip chappies. Where do you want them to be, right? Not everything is going to be as bright as you think it needs to, or vice versa, be as dark as you think it needs to be either, right? A little bit more of our deep green, that sap green, just to make that shadowy grass, but still give you that green feel versus the rest. Got our light source back there. Freaking awesome, you guys. Just awesome. Over there, a couple little bits. Oh, it's fantastic. Just fantastic. If you ask me. Now, this one is available for sale, guys. So, if you go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, you can grab it up and nab it up before anyone else has the chance to. Right, and, but they're 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 literally sitting there debating: should I get this one? Should I not? And you could go in and sneak it out right from underneath their nose. That's the best part about the Paint with Josh show: first come, first serve, baby. First come, first serve. Look at this painting, guys, guys. So this one's number twelve forty-two, and I think it's like two hundred and fifty bucks, something like that. Something two fifty-five, maybe something crazy, crazy low. 255 ish now in order to make our our grass right here kind of pop with all these little bits of yellowish greenery we need to get more yellow out guys that's not gonna work so give me one second to dig through the old paint tub and for whatever reason the yellow is always at the bottom whenever I need it yep at the very 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 bottom of the bucket is the yellow don't ask why it likes to it likes to live down there I don't know why I don't know why. It's not up to me. It's not up to me, guys. All right, let's go over here. And that, that. I never seem to need any color that's on the top. They <laughs> always are at the bottom of the old paint bucket, right? Or the box or whatever it is that we keep our paints in. I'm sure that's a good question. What do you keep your paints in, guys? That's actually a very good question. I want to know the answer, too. <clears throat> so tell me. What do you keep your paints in? Is it in like a, is it in like a bin like this, right? Like an art bin, or is it in a box? 
Do you keep them in one of those rolling carts that you put, you can like wheel up next to you that have the three shelves like Tanisha had? Those are really cool. Like, what do you keep your, your paints in? The original case that came in? Because that's fun too. I'm going to get a little bit of my liquid white. I have that box. Right into my, see how the liquid white's in there? It's very runny and wet. We're going to tap into that cat yellow just to help it become a little more thin. And that way it'll come off of our brush a bit easier as we come in and start to attach on little bits. Baby little things, not trying to cover up our bright spot too much. Bits of branches that get lit up in the night, right? Then we can work them down until they get darker and darker and darker and darker. Don't have to be super dark, but leave some bits of darkness underneath so you can kind of see inside. Those bits of darkness allow us to reach in and grab something out. Look at the yellow on top of the thing. Oh, it's fire. Just fire. If you ask me, why not? Because I love this cerulean blue and everybody seems to love it too. Let's get a few little, little bluey babies out here. Just a couple little bluey bits. Just like him, guys. All right, watch this old brush off. I don't think we'll need any more action on our bushes and stuff. Right? Won't need too much more action on them. I do need to clean off a few of these brushes. When I'm doing that, you guys have to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwiches? <laughs> I'm going to make a game show one time. Like, welcome to What's Your Favorite Sandwich? <laughs> I'm your host, Paint with Josh, and I'm constantly hungry. What are you eating tonight? What's your favorite sandwich yet? Maybe you're not a sandwich person, you're a pizza guy. Not like the guy that delivers the pizzas, like a pizza guy. I'm a pizza guy. I like the pizza, right? No? Nobody? It's fine. Maybe you like salads. I don't know. I don't know. But tell me what you like. It doesn't have to be a sandwich. But tell me what you like. What do you like to have? What do you like to have, man? And I only got about 17 more brushes to clean, guys. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just joshing you. Now remember, we're all going to go head over and check out the uh, Glitterwix stream. If you're not already following Glitterwix, you should be. She's going to be on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, probably YouTube as well, pouring her live candle show right after mine. So, I know you're not doing anything. Let's all get over to Glitterwix, and we're going to have a good time. We are going to have a good time. Oh, look at this painting, guys. Look at the depth. Look at the freaking depth of this thing. That's insane. That is some serious depth. You want to know why? Versus the other painting that we did the other day? Because we left more ground, kind of started our, our horizon up a little bit higher, which gives you more depth, bro. I like it. I like it. All right, now we're going to come in and highlight these trees because you can't just have them be all silhouette-y, right? We'll come in here. We'll get our liquid white onto our brush, just on the one side, really. We don't even need too much. Come over there, deposit it down there, right? Grab a little bit of our yellow so we can mix that guy in with our green. And our goal is to not have any more of the liquid white showing through the branches or the bristles of the brush, right? Let's get a little bit on there on each side. And now we can do this little baby guy real far away, right? A little touch, a couple little taps. We don't want to touch him so hard or give him so many details because he's far away. Little guy, right? Little touches, little things way out in the night. No one's going to see him way off across the thing, especially not as thick as we're going to be able to see this guy, right? So let's come off our trunk. Got to turn on the other side. There we go. Come off our little bits. We're going to stay along the edge of the tree. All right? We stay out here along the edge so our edge is brightest right out there. Now, once we start working back in, even on the same side of the brush, you can see how it's contacted. It's starting to get darker and darker and darker. We're going to keep going because we don't want it to be so bright on this side. Right? We want it to be darker. Maybe I gotta rotate a little bit just to drop off a couple more little guys over there. And then, that's it, seriously. You don't need it to be any brighter or any darker than that old guy. Pop a little sharpness out on his branch. That's amazing, you guys. Honestly, 
honestly now, right? I'm going to make them a couple little places, just a bit brighter. But the goal is we want to keep some of those deep, dark areas. We don't want to see every single bit all in the light. And you have to have a shadowy side. So you absolutely cannot make the, the, the one side as bright as the other side. Don't go over all of those little dabs of darkness either. Right? You go over too many of those little dabs and we've lost those areas that we can reach in and pull something out. That's what gives us our depth, guys. If you don't and you're not able to reach in and pull out something because there's no dark area, then you got a flat old bush. Just a flat old bush. You might as well not have any at all. So, over here, mix it up. Get rid of the stuff off of that guy. And then, clean off these other two brushes. And you guys are going to have to start coming up with a name for this painting because it's nearly finished. I'm going to drop in one more branch. Maybe we drop a whole branch that fell out into the water. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe. I kind of like its openness over here. Like you can see the water passing by, leading, leading on. Look at this freaking sign, you guys. It's so awesome. Oh, I love that sign. That sign is the business, let me tell you. And it will be going up in the window of my new business when we get to Oregon in a couple weeks. Guys, we got to talk about that. I need to really sit down and decide when I'm going to stop doing shows and then move, get set up, and then fire the shows back up, right? That's the thing. That's the thing, guys. Oh. Now, don't think just because I'm opening up my own store that I'm not going to do the live shows anymore. This is what pays the bills. People buy the painting while I'm live, right? So I'll always don't come on and do live, so don't worry about that. But I'm going to have to stop to move all my stuff at some point, right? Let's get a little bit more of our liquid white right in here, not as much as we did the first time. And then just into the water, not onto the land or the flowers, but just in the water. And that'll be our little reflections of our, our stars above. Just fantastic. Bang! Right like that, guys. That's a cool little painting. You can walk around it, go around the side. What are you thinking? So start coming up with a name for this one. If it does end up getting purchased, then the buyer gets to choose the name, like always, right? But if not, then Old Paint with Josh gets to choose the name from all the names in the name suggestion area down there in the comments. All right, all of those names down there we get to pick from. And if there's no names, how am I going to choose your name, right? You're going to have to write it. You gotta write it out. What do you want to call this painting? Alaskan River something or other, or Alaskan Pond of a Lake and something this and that. <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it, but you guys gotta come up with it, because I've come up with way too many titles already. Alright, just too many titles so far. After 1,200 paintings, this is actually number 1,242. After that many paintings, you can't name a painting anymore. It just all becomes the same as the last 1,200 paintings that you, you tried to name. Mountain, sunset, waterfall, the, uh, I can't, that was the last one. Uh, river, this, <laughs> it's a nightmare after so many. So I count on you guys to be able to help me. You have to help me. <laughs> You have to help me come up with a name, and we're going to be all set. Let's get rid of all this color, all this stuffs that we used. And if you do buy during the live show, you get a free gift off the spinny winny wheel as it's become known. Is that the right wordage? As it's become known to be called? <laughs> it's become known to be called. The Spinny Winnie Wheel, which always gives you out some fantastic sort of prize. And if it doesn't, I give you a free spin. <laughs> I give you an extra one. All right, let's clean this guy up over here and over there. Wipe this off. Come back over yonder and wipe this guy down. There we go. All that excess paint, keep it from drying when it's very thin. People think oils take so long to dry. If you spread them real thin, right, if you pull it out real thin and then not wipe that area, that dries almost overnight. You know what I mean? It's, it's dry by the next time I come to paint. So, if they're big and thick, big old pile, they'll stay wet for a while. But if it's very thin, they dry very quickly. Very quickly, guys. All right. So, this was a nice, quick little tutorial. Turned out amazing. 
And I can't wait to see your guys' versions of it. It's going to be awesome. The Passage Among the Stars. That is cool. Back Over Yonder. I like that, too. Awesome titles, guys. Hey, Deanna Holland from Oklahoma. What's happening, everybody? Tracy Blair's here. Sherry, Chris, Kimberly, Mystic Meadow. I like that, guys. Remember, if you like this painting just enough and you want to purchase it, you get to choose the title and you get the free gift off the spinning winnie wheel, but you got to do it while we're live during the show. Maybe we should put some meteors in there. Mm. All right. We've already sprayed in our stars, right? They're still wet. So if you wanted to do like a meteor strike, I'm going to take my knife. And this isn't going to be like our big one that we just did. This is like little meteor shower in the night, right? All they are are little streaks. So grab onto one of your thicker stars and just go, right? Straight through. You get a little, little streak coming down into the, into the, the thing. Now, we don't want to do it in all different directions. Maybe this guy we could get right there coming in from that side maybe not being as long right all these little shooting in from the atmosphere coming at all different angles and different ways maybe this guy was coming in right here just with the small side of the knife just a little guy zip coming in through the atmosphere coming at different angles different lengths and you get all these cool little things right? and the longer you make them zip the more they'll look like uh, streaking, shooting stars in the night. Shooting stars. And then you don't even have to play with them that much. Maybe this guy will change his angle up right here. Grab a couple. Ooh, he's a green shooting star. That's cool. A couple little things just by wipe, uh, scraping our knife in. Here, there, and everywhere. All right, maybe this guy real far off. A little bit. Different angle. Coming in from the atmosphere. <laughs> all over the place, but don't put too many. That's when you start going, all right, like, I've seen that, right, during a meteor shower. I've seen five or six of them at a time, and then those are gone, and another 20 million show up, right? But they're not all happening at the same time, so don't do too many. That's the goal. Too many little meteor showers, and there'll be a cosmic storm. Just a cosmic storm of power. <laughs> all right, let's get rid of this guy. Now, we've got about 23 minutes until the uh, Glitterwick show starts. So I want to say thank you to the people watching over on Facebook and on YouTube. You guys have been fantastic. I can't wait to see your versions of this painting. So please send them in to facebook.com slash official paint with Josh. And until I see you guys again next time, merch is 20% off, by the way. 20% off just until tomorrow, I think. So if you want a t-shirt or a hat or something, get over to the store and uh, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. So until I see you guys again next time, take care, have the rest of a good day, and blah, blah. Boom! Man, I'm getting faster at these.